you just take us into the, the dressing room at Wembley and how much that hurt, both for you and the team? Yeah, it's, it's never nice to, to lose any game, but, you know, to, to lose a final, it's, it's a huge disappointment. And, you know, it's like I said before, it's been a, a long season and, you know, we fought, especially in that competition, like very hard against some good opponents. And, um, you know, we just, we fell short in the end and it's, it's as simple as that. And, you know, we just have to regroup. We had a short talk with the, the team in the dressing room and, and the staff. Um, but yeah, for me, we have to just dust ourselves down and get ready for, for next season because we can't change what's already happened. C could you give us a vague idea of what was said? No, that's what was said. Um, you know, we don't have time to dwell on it or, you know, lose too much concentration on it because we can't change it now. We give 100% on the pitch, so it's it's easier to you know, move on from it. If you if you know that you've not given everything you can give, then it becomes tough. Um, so, yeah, we just get ready for, for next season now and prepare as best we can um, in, in pre-season. What's on the pitch? Hi, Marcus. Um, your manager at Manchester United has been regularly asked about the way you've rejuvenated this season and he's repeatedly said he's not Harry Potter and he's said it's down to you rather than any managerial wizardry. Just wondering what you've found in him that uh, that's helped you. Is it is it as simple as having that pre-season, that free pre-season that you haven't had for so long, or is it the manager that's helped you? What what is it that's helped spark the turnaround? No, it was definitely the the manager as well because he come in and he wanted to win, and you know I feel like at times we've we've lacked that ambition as I've as I've said before, and um, he wasn't caring about you know getting into the top four and doing any of that, you just wanted to win trophies and, you know, when you strive for the best, sometimes you are going to fall short, you know, as we as we did in, in areas this season and um, but you have to look at the, the outcome, you know, we we managed to, to win a trophy and um, get into back into the Champions League spots, um, get to a, another final and, you know, it's, it's definitely a progression from, from the previous year or a couple of years before, so um, I think, yeah, he just managed to motivate me and um, just re relight the, the flame that was that was missing. You, you s obviously, it has been a, a, a real season of, of, of progress on an individual and collective level, but seeing what City have done up the road has obviously makes, makes the red half of Manchester want success even more. There's also lots of talk in the background at the moment about which way the club's going to go in terms of ownership. Blah, blah. You spoke about players blocking out transfer speculation and stuff earlier. Is it that easy to do right now in, when there's so much uncertainty around the club you love? Um, for me, yeah, because I'm I'm here with national team. Like I don't I don't want to be worrying about what's what's going on in in Manchester and stuff like that. So for me, it's just the importance on on these next two games and you know get one getting a job done and two let's try and do it as as well as we can. Thanks, Simon. Matt Law, Marcus. Um, can I take you back to the World Cup? Because you had a fantastic personal World Cup, but you were you didn't start the, the Senegal or, or France games. And we haven't really spoken to you in an England capacity since then. How did you feel? Because it must have been tough for you to be told you weren't going to start those games, particularly the France game. I think you're England's top scorer at the time in the tournament. Was, was that? How, were you frustrated? Were you angry? How did it make you feel? I think everyone's a little bit frustrated when they when they're not playing. Um, but at the same time, you, you're part of a, uh, of a squad and, you know, I'm never going to be that person to disrupt a, a team, especially when they're, you know, preparing for, for a massive game. So um, for me, it was it was disappointing, yeah. But I, I just got on with it and, you know, when I did get my opportunity to come on, I just tried to do what I can do to help us uh, win the game. And how did you... Because you also responded very well in terms of your club season like like other players did when you went back and there wasn't a sort of World Cup hangover. How did you process it? What did you do? Did you go away? Did you? How did you process it so that you came back with United and managed to also finish the season very well and have a good second half of the season? Um, like I just mentioned before about going from United to England, it's the same thing when we go from England back to, back to club. You know, you have to try and try your best to put that disappointment behind you. 
And, you know, when we got back to club, we had some World Cup winners there. So everyone was in a different emotional state. But the, f the thing that probably helped massively was the fact that everyone was just united and, and together. Um, so, yeah, there wasn't really a, a dwell or a hangover period from from the, the World Cup. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's it's obviously a, a, a huge disappointment to, to get knocked out of any tournament, never mind um, the World Cup. So um, you just have to do your best to try and move on from it. And the best, the, the easiest way to do that is to play an, another game of football. And yeah, I was pleased that the start happened so quickly after. Okay, we've got Matt Dunn and then we'll go Paul Joyce. Hi, Marcus. <coughs> Appreciate uh, England, Steve, focus these next two days, but there is a lot of blue noise about to head down this way, down the M6. Does it make you more determined to... I mean, you remember when you were a youngster growing up that United were the top dogs. It doesn't last forever. It might seem like it is at the moment at City. Does that make you more determined to make United top dogs again, what's gone on, uh, before you leave the club? Yeah, I think, um, you know, that was always the the aim anyway regardless of you know their success this year or the previous years because you know let's be honest it's it's not anything new the only thing that's new is that they managed to win all three um but you know like i said before they they're a, a, a very good team and um it's not just us that are trying to to catch up to them it's it's a, it's pretty much every team as well so um you know it's is it a challenge? Yeah, but we, we can't shy away from it. We have to, you know, face it and do our best next season. And as a Manchester lad, how bad do you anticipate it being? How bad do I anticipate what? It being the next sort of 24 hours with all that excitement arriving. And do you think there'll be no, a bit like of stick or will there be a bit more respectful than that? No, it's going to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, it's, it's congratulations to, to them and... You know, for me, they they deserved it. They played they played the best football this year, and um, yeah, there's not much much more to to say about it really. I think you know the the talking's done on the pitch, and um, you know they 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 done really well this year. And it's, sorry, just on to finish on that sub subject, is that the strength of this squad, which perhaps wasn't there in the past years, that you can have all that banter? And then all of you play well together for England. Yeah, I think definitely that's that's a part of it. Um, but there's there's a there's a strong bond in in this squad, and um, there has been regardless of which players come in. And I think it, it is down to the environment. Um, there's there's not much more I can put it put it down to. Um, so yeah, we're we're looking forward to you know having them back here. Um, they're obviously all really good players and you know we need them if, if we want our squad to be as strong as, as possible. Thanks, Matt. And we'll finish with Paul Joyce. Sorry, Marcus. It's just one in a similar vein. Um, on Saturday night, d did you d did you watch the Champions League final? And, and d do you watch the trophy lift and the celebrations? Or do you know, because when, when you won the League Cup in, in February, um, I think Trent did an interview saying that he watched the match and then switched off because he didn't want to yeah. go through the celebration. I was just wondering it, if, if what your sort of yeah, it's how it worked out for you and what was the, the rationale behind that. It's exactly the same. Um, I like watching football. I like watching the be the best games. Um, so that's what I did. But after they they win the game, I don't need to watch them celebrating and all that stuff. So yeah, TV off. <laughs> Uh, I was at my friend's house. Okay, guys, we'll end it there. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.